Hi everybody, this is Mark from Mark's Mandalas. And I would like to show you a few examples of um, not necessarily the artwork, but what they have in common underneath the artwork. And that is the color of the background. Um, everything that you see here, except for the coffee mug, I had to do additional preparation to achieve a darker background. And uh, what I have, I have a couple of, of resin coasters, that one and that one. And I have a couple of painted rocks and I have the coffee mug. And then I have a paperweight that I kind of improv. Um, it's kind of cool actually, when you get it from the side and you look in the bottom side of the top up, up here, you can see the reflection of the dots. Anyway, um, all of these pieces here, I had to do additional prep work to get them black. And I'm a big fan of being efficient and making things uh, easier to do. And after talking with the epoxy experts, I um, was able to order something from them that is not on their website or on any other location. And I couldn't find anybody else that's offering something um, of a art quality grade epoxy resin. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you real fast what I'm talking about. Now this is part B of Max CLR, which looks um, the same as when you order the clear version of this. But here is the star of the show right here. And this is what's very different. Normally when you order this, it comes in clear. And if you want to make it black, you have to add pigment to it. Uh, but I was able to order it already in black. And I do a lot of backgrounds in black and I know I'm gonna be using this regularly, so I had no problem ordering a larger amount in, um, in this color. And now if you are someone that likes to, to paint on white, the great news is you can order this in white as well. And uh, actually you can get it in blue, red, or yellow in addition to the clear black and white. Um, but I am gonna be using black for the most part. Down the line, I might end up ordering uh, some other colors to play around with. If you want any custom colors besides those main ones, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and show you the, uh, a photo of the pigment set that they offer, uh, which are the colors that you can order the uh, um, Max CLR in, in these colors right here. And if you want to go ahead and, and make some custom colors, you can order this pigment set from them. And you can mix to get whatever, if you want a green or a teal or uh, some sort of an orange, you know, you can start mixing those pigments together to create whatever color that you're looking for. But I'm gonna go ahead and clear this area out here. Like I said, I was starting to set up. I have my silicone mat, my level, my scale. I got the resin out, stir stick. I got, got my gloves right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set up and I'm gonna do a, um, a resin pour with this black Max CLR. Uh, great news also, the clear is FDA compliant and food safe uh, once it's cured. And the same goes for any of the colors that they're offering. So. That's wonderful news. So uh, stay tuned and I'm gonna go ahead and get ready and, and do a, a pour for you. Okay, everybody, I got everything set up here and I'm gonna be ready to roll. I'm gonna do a lot of um, either fast forwarding or I'm just going to um, go from the beginning right to the end of each step. And um, so diving right in, I'm gonna do a couple of, of rocks and and I have some coaster mold, molds as well. I'll do as many as I have enough resin for, and it might only be one or it might be a, up to three of them. I'm gonna do um, 100 grams. I'm gonna measure by weight. I have my first cup on the scale, and I'm gonna measure my resin by weight. I always do. Now, this is the bottle that came with this one. This is the 32 ounce part A with a, a 16 ounce part B, but I already have a 32 ounce part B that I got with a larger container of clear resin. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and continue to use this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on this. Well, and actually I'm going to back up for a second. You notice right here, I have my level. You want to make sure you have a level working area. If I turn this a little bit, you should be able to see the bubble in the middle here is centered. I measure it both this way and this way. And if your table isn't level, you want to level your table best you can, which is what I've done. 
and I have a level working surface. I have a silicone mat on my table. Um, also on a table that if resin gets on there, I'm not gonna cry over it. You wanna make sure you don't have any carpeting or furniture, clothing, anything like that, that if you get resin on it, it's going to make you upset. So uh, make sure you're working the proper area with proper ventilation. Um, eye protection is a great idea and I always glove up. So just for that reason, I could have had resin in there, but it knocked over onto my silicone mat with my gloved up hands. So let's go ahead and dive in here. Turn the power on the scale and I'm going to measure out 100 grams of part A and this is black. This is a special menu item from the epoxy experts and you want to continue watching this video because I'm going to give you a little tip on how you can get a special price from them. You're going to want to order from them directly and I'll give their information in the description in the below in this below this video. Okay, and now I'm going to put in I'm going to go ahead and zero this out and I'm going to add 50 grams of of the part B. Okay, I have my 50 grams of part B. I have my resin measured out properly. Now I'm going to go ahead and stir this for three minutes. So I'll be right back. Okay, it's been three minutes. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pour this into a second cup. Very important step here. This is very, very important. And you want to make sure that when you pour this, you do not scrape this cup to get every last bit of resin out. Just pour the contents of the cup, first cup into the second one. Let it drip as long as you want to, but don't scrape anything out of there. Um, you're opening yourself up to possibly having a bad resin experience. It might have some curing issues, so an important step. And you can see how beautifully black this is. And I really do like not having to worry about the extra step of adding tint to clear resin. Um, it's already done for me, which is nice. Okay, we're gonna call that good enough for this demonstration. And I'm gonna get this cup out of the way. Now, now I'm gonna stir this for three more minutes. Okay, I'm, I've stirred this for another three minutes and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, let this sit for about five minutes and allow the air bubbles that are in here, it's, uh, you really can't see them because this is black and you can't see through it, but there are a whole bunch of little air bubbles in here and you want to have give them an opportunity to raise, rise to the surface and, and pop. So I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit before I pour it into my coaster molds and on these rocks. Okay, I am back. It's been five minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and set these coaster molds up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start by pouring one of these to start with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and pour the resin on these rocks. I'm gonna maybe experiment with how I Pour the resin on one of the, the rocks. So let's go ahead and get going here. And I really like how this is black right out of the container. Just like that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and go over here. And I'm 
what I'm thinking about doing is just letting it run naturally over the edge and not touching it and seeing if I can give myself a large enough surface of where I want to paint to be covered with the resin and have kind of a drip over the edge effect and leave some of the natural stone. We've never done this before, so I don't know how it's going to turn out. And now, this other one, I'm gonna go ahead, this is the, what's gonna be the bottom when I create the artwork. I'm gonna go ahead and pour some on here. This one I'm planning on covering the entire stone. And I got a couple drips that have um, come off the cup onto my work surface, but it's a silicone mat and it'll peel right off once it's cured. So no worries with that at all. Okay, that bottom is good enough on here. Let's go ahead and turn this over on what will be the top side. And now I'm starting to get a little bit messy with resin on my gloves. And just take my finger here and just for the big reason you want to make sure you have gloves on. Don't touch your face or your eyes. If you got an itch, stop and take your gloves off and make sure you're totally clear of resin on your hands before you before you itch at all. Wow, that's really nice. Oh my goodness. Um boy, I don't know if I have enough here for another coaster. Now you can scrape this cup out here, so I think I am going to just say heck with it, and I'm gonna go ahead and and see what I get out of here. If I don't have enough for the coaster, that's okay. It's not looking like it. Even scraping everything out of here. That is not going to be enough. But I wasn't sure. I just made a batch. I made this video mainly just to show you um, this new special menu pre-mixed black epoxy resin from the epoxy experts. It's Max CLR. It's FDA compliant. It's food safe when, uh, when completely cured. And when it's completely cured, it's also uh, um, safe for the skin. So if you have uh, allergies, uh, there's a much lower chance of there being any kind of allergic reactions with this. Um, I'm gonna let this sit for just a little bit. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's an air bubble right here and right here. And I see some really small ones over here that are gonna, it's gonna continue to off gas and bubbles are gonna want to come to the surface and pop. Some of them won't pop. So what I'm going to do in a few minutes is I'm actually going to uh, spray, I'm gonna put new gloves on and I'm gonna go ahead and spray this anywhere where I see air bubbles. And this is acetone. So you wanna be very careful with acetone. Let me go ahead and show you up. This is what I got. Got it from my local DIY big box store. You wanna make sure that whenever you use it that you have very good ventilation and uh, keep it away from flames. Read all the warnings on the can and, and heed what they say. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, let this sit for a few minutes. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna spray these and then we're gonna come back magically the next day and uh, check up on this stuff. So I'll be right back. Okay, it's been five, 10 minutes or so. And you actually, the working time on this is 50 to 70 minutes. And um, you wanna ideally work with this resin in around 75 degrees Fahrenheit if possible uh, to get the, the optimum results. And I went ahead and I, while I had the camera on pause, I poured some of the resin out of here onto this back rock, get a little more coverage on here. Kind of a drip effect on the side still, not near as much, but, um, and I'll just wait for the resin in this 
coaster mold to cure and, and be able to pop it right out. So now, right now, I do see those bubbles are still right there. I see some small air bubbles on both of these. Um, you can use a flame if you want, a butane torch. Uh, I have one, I use it sometimes, but I usually like to use acetone. You don't have to worry about uh, burning the resin or burning the silicone molds or the silicone mat. Um, this evaporates. You just want to make sure that you have very good air ventilation whenever you use this and uh, watch your eyes, your skin, everything. So just be careful with it and, and heed the warnings on the acetone container. So I'm just going to spray this. Couple little sprays on each one. And that's that's all there is to it. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit and I will be back tomorrow morning. It's gonna be um, about 10 to 12 hours when I come in here and I check on these and uh, let's go in. And I should be able to pop uh, this out of the mold. You don't wanna wait until this is fully cured before, before you pop it out. It can make it a little bit more difficult. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take these rocks off of this spiked mat here and smush down any little pointed areas uh, that are on the bottom of the of the rocks. I'll smush them down on this mat here and then let them go ahead and sit. So I'll be back here tomorrow morning, but it'll just be just a moment for you. Okay, everybody, it has been about 11 hours and we're back out here. Um, before I set my phone up to record this section of it here, I went ahead and pulled this rock off already and I pulled it off these spikes and I smushed it down and then I felt along here until I got, there are like six spots on here that were a little bit pointy uh, that I smushed down and now they're, they're not sharp at all. So you don't have to worry about hurting yourself with them. I don't have to worry about sanding them down later on. And on the side I'm going to paint on, this just came out beautiful. I mean, look how nice and smooth that is. I'm really looking forward to painting a mandala on this, on the stone. Um, I also went to touch this one and it wasn't stuck on the spikes at all. And this is kind of the poured over effect I was, I was looking for. And I'm not sure how I'll like it once it's finished and once I've sealed the, the piece and whatever I paint on here. But you can see my work surface is nice and smooth. And I think the bottom is kind of a cool effect. I kind of like that actually. Um, and I didn't have to smush anything down. These drops are nice and rounded. And um, so this might be something that I do more often in the future, not worry about sealing the bottom of the stone and leave that natural stone on the bottom. And then also just have these drips on here, which aren't sharp at all. So really happy with these two. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and actually here's this coaster that was, did not get completed and I can just pull this right off of here. Notice it just comes right out. I'll get the rest of that out here afterwards, but it was easy enough just to clean that up, uh, put that aside. And if you like this, uh, this video and would like to support more content like this, if you would give me a, a like on this video and uh, maybe hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when I release more videos, you can hit the notification bell on the video as well. So now let's go ahead and pop this coaster out. Um, this is the bottom of it right here. And it really doesn't matter what it looks like, but it does look wonderful. And let's go ahead. Make sure this is released all the way around here. And as you saw this, how this was still pliable, this is not fully cured yet, but it is at a point where you can remove it from this mold and you, and you don't have to worry about, I mean, like it's bending a little bit, but I'm going to set it back on the counter. As you can see it's still pretty pliable. but you can set that right here on this flat surface and it will level itself. 
wanted to show there's a nice lip in here so I can paint I can paint my mandala in this area and then I can fill well, I'm going to fill over the top of it with some clear resin to protect the artwork so there's a first look at the results of the max CLR in black um, I do want to point out if you these were pretty smooth stones if you use one that's more rough you might get more of the natural um, or not quite as, as flat. Um, you might get some more of the natural stone uh, to come through where you see it, where it won't be quite as black. It'll be a little bit thinner. It's going to fill in the uneven, all the valleys, and the peaks are going to be more of that natural stone color. Uh, it's still beautiful, but I just wanted to let you be aware that um, depending on, on the smoothness of the stone and the flatness of it, it will give you different results, but um, I'm thrilled with how well this has worked out, and uh, I look forward to painting on this and sharing what that result is. This is Mark from Mark's Mandalas. Until next time, rock on.